This video is sponsored by the design mechanism, the makers of Mithras. Mithras is a registered trademark of the Design Mechanism Inc. used with permission, all rights reserved. Right, right, right. Yeah, I think we're both, um, everyone's on. If somebody can just say something. Hello. <laughs> I know what the others were doing. <laughs> You're all mouthing and pretending it wasn't. <laughs> wasn't on i know what you're doing hello everyone welcome back um we episode 10 of the harpy queen the characters are getting extremely close to attempting to banish the harpy queen once and for all out of the realm as she is frantically trying to draw herself in to cause havoc and mayhem um, yeah, the party are currently in a transition between the uh, their world and another world through what appears to be some kind of maze or labyrinth. And they we finished last time with Hasra telling somebody to be quiet because he thought he heard snoring. Um, but before I tell you any more about that, let's have an opportunity. Let me give the players an opportunity to say who they are and who they're playing tonight. And as always, we start with you, Mr. Pickles. And one of these days, Mr. Pickles, I'm going to stay, say, uh, and as always, we start with Medivac. <laughs> but uh, go for it, Mr. Pickles, when I move people's cameras around. Okay, go for it. I am Mr. Pickles, and my internet connection might be unstable. So if somebody could just start screaming when I start sounding glitchy or something, that that way I don't go on forever. Um, I play Barlaby Fumus, the one who is shushed by. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, he he's our team's theist. He works for his goddess Amriel and tries to bring her way to the world, which is through curing people and healing. And all, all my spells are basically just helping people. I've got one attack spell, but it's just a stun. It deals no damage. Um, Makes a loud noise as well. It does. And that's part of why I value that spell a lot. I could just start making loud noises if I need to call for help. <laughs> I often do as Barley because on his own, he's not really a fighter. He has like a defensive combat style and he has some street thug abilities from his youth. But beyond that, he's really not much of a fighter. He's here to boost the others and make people look better. Um, he knows a lot about history and monsters, a little bit about poisons, and overall he's just sort of a, a knowledge and support character. He's got friends in the guards, which doesn't really help us here. <laughs> no, it doesn't. At all. And he's a savior of the slums, which means nothing here. <laughs> uh, but otherwise, he's good at speaking, good at standing in the back. He often seems to be holding the lantern. And with that, I will pass this on to Captain Maxilator. Oh, I see what you did there. I see what you did there. <laughs> Little hobbit. <laughs> Doing it again to me, aren't you? Certainly is. It's almost like bullying at this point. It, it is bullying. <laughs> I get bullied at work already, all right? It's, oh, it's, no. Don't you make no, me I'm, feel I'm, sad. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Anyways, I'm Max. I play Rohan, a uh, rogue slash thief from the streets of Lindo. He's uh, doing his great outing right now, and it's been a lot of bad luck and regrets. 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 <sighs> but uh, he's not coming out of this empty-handed. Not by a long shot. He, he's going to be coming out of this... With two, with two, with two extra gems in his arm. <laughs> two extra, yeah. I remember what happened last week. I remember. Yeah. The party's not going to figure it out. The party isn't smart enough. We're good. And I'm gonna, I'm just gonna pass this to Captain Kangaroo. Everybody, I'm Captain Kangaroo. Uh, 
I probably have the same internet problem of Mr. Pickles, which means he's infected me. Uh, I, are, you in that, are you in the same? Are you in the same house? Are you in the same house? No. <laughs> no I just feel like. I, I mean, maybe the states are like you know trying to sell off bandwidth. <laughs> I don't know. I, I really don't know what's going on, but um, <laughs> it's just not really working on this side of the the Atlantic. But anyways, I, I'm Captain Kangaroo. I am playing Cyrus Alias. He is the uh, the go to for everything. He's a uh, he kicks ass physically. He kicks ass with magic, and honestly, he just kicks ass. Uh, he will see what he does. See what he's able to do to kind of you know create a uh, a barrier between death and not for the rest of the party. Uh, you know, or he just dies himself victoriously and very heroically and proves a point that he will play the entire time. Um, but from there, I'm going to pass the, uh, the microphone to our good friend, Medivac. Well, thank you. That was brilliant. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Medivac and I play Hajri Khan. He's a nomad from the northern steppes of Odess. He was part of the Grey Ghosts, but he lost his tribe and wandered down to um, Lindo. Um, and Joined this most of this group after yeah. um, helping out Count Bastion and taking a message for him. Sorry, when you said most of the group, you just mean <laughs> Val to be. He's a tracker, a forager. He's up in the woods. He's you know been in uh, been in a couple of the cities, but he's still a little bit withheld when he's in the cities. He's not very charismatic that way. Um, that put him in a forest, and he will, he'll be as mm. happy as a, yeah, as a pig in muck. Which brings <laughs> me back to, he's also a lump hefter. I thought you were going to say brings us around to in wills. <laughs> yeah. um, yes, he's a lump hefter because he um, he was able to throw over a huge pig. Just yeah, I think you were uh, rolling them. I think I was rolling, <laughs> yeah. just rolling them over. Um, He's a selfless protector. If anybody is in danger, he has a habit of jumping in to protect them. Um, he's very proud of that. He's very good with a short spear and a scimitar. Um, he's getting better at evading things, but he's still not that good. Um, you can see after a while of this, this constant combat that he's been doing, his muscles are getting more... Um, well, they're getting bait bigger. <laughs> <laughs> is, is going up, which is good. Um, before this goes any further, I'll pass on. Yeah, I was going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. I was getting worried where we were going there. Um, yes. Yeah, so the party I have moved from a place called Linda up the coast to a place called Windvine. Um, Bartleby actually has two acolytes that he left in Lindo. Uh, I think they're called Sam and Decker, but uh, I could be wrong with yes. that. Yeah. And anyway, they, they've been on a very long, long crusade um, to actually banish the world of a harpy queen, the harpy queen called Shahelia. They've got a sacrificial or a dagger that um, they got from a soothsayer that is legend to be able to stop or kill Shahelia. They have a cryptic poem that um, Bartaby has been studying for the clue to an answer of how to actually defeat her. And they thought they had a map that turned out to be a hidden portal into the maze that links from one of the, the real world into the um, probably the land where Shahelia is or perhaps where her acolytes are. They've had lots of adventures down here um, so far. And last week they met a very strange man at the end who said that there was a portal out that had to be, could only be opened by, with a key that uh, a monster had within the, the party, uh, within the maze. We had a bit of a false start last week when they thought they were um, going to fight it, but it turned out to be a, 
a room full of mannequins in armour that Bartleby actually tried to um, spit something at, a bit of paper at, I think. But I think it hit um, hit a weapon, was it? Uh, oh, no, hit an armour. It hit some armour, yeah. Um, so that happened. Anyway... They then went to a, like a barracks room when there was foot lockers that Rohan um, undid, unlocked and peered inside and pocketed two gems that the rest of the party are not, um, they know nothing about. He was very deceitful with his sleight of hand. And then they came up to a very big gate, a very big gate that was actually locked but looked like it had been pounded from the from the inside out. Although, as Hasra noticed, the hinges were still firmly in the wall. I forget what was happening at the back uh, when Hasra turned round to um, Bartleby and, and Rohan and said, "Shh." Um, but then, um, at that point, Hasra listened inside and could hear some um, deep rumbling snoring. And at this point, I would like to say, Hazra, could you roll your survival skill? Because there was something I forgot to do last time. Um, yeah, you are quite certain that the snoring sound is more that of an animal rather than a human. Matter of fact, it reminds you of being back in Lindo, out in your cabin, and hearing Brutus snoring in the barn. Or this person just has severe sleep apnea and we're yep. all misconstrued. Could be. Could be. Um, yeah, so they, they, you can see that there, there is like a tumbler lock, like that would need a key or something. And, and if you remember, you looked in and it was quite dark in there. There was nothing that you could see. Um, you Did have... You see some, some coinage or something in there. Say again, sorry. Did, weren't we able to see some like coins or... or yeah, there? There was, they looked like there was some kind of like material drapes and coins that seemed to be scattered uh, around but there was you couldn't see the cause of the um the snoring um you have approached this up to this point um silently and hasra you can confirm that because there is no um the snoring continues there's no break um in the snoring at all um, I'm going to quietly go back to the party. Yeah. Okay. And I'll tell them all about the, 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 the bars in a whispered tone. You, and you explain about the lock. You can, if you wish, there's a corridor around the corner, or there is also the, like the barracks room oh, that you were yeah. in before. Uh, in which case, yes, I'll beckon them to come back the way we came, and I will, I'll go back to the barracks room. Cool. He's just waiting for everybody. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. It's Get, you and I. Right. Yeah. Not again. I need me to pray for you. <laughs> I got a splinter. I, I'll, I'll move again. I'll move everyone in there. You um, the, 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 there is the, the large gate that's the, the, it has a lock on it, and but the, the, the inner is. Where the door's closed seem to be buckled and bent a little bit, but the hinges are solid, which is good. But when I listened and without any distraction, um, I, I could hear snoring, a most bestial snoring, almost like, do you know, when, when we when we took took Brutus to Grandma's hall and we stayed over in the night, and Brutus was snoring through the night, very much like that. I think we have found this beast. Well, hopefully you're right. Um, keep in mind that my spells are very time sensitive, so I'm going to kind of wait for a real confirmation uh, before I kind of put uh, these stuff on us, and our weapons. Um, how, how long does it take you to do this once, once you have your confirmation? I uh, just need some concentration and stretch out a bit, get the good stuff, get the juices flowing with the body. Uh, so we'll see. So about um, usually about like 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, you know, a few seconds, yeah. Uh, but, okay, we need to figure this out, the best way to approach this. From what I understand, this beast is sleeping currently, which might be the best time for attack, if we're it silent is. enough. But uh, the, the it, first thing we need be, before you go any further, my friend Cyrus, that we need the lock to be unlocked. Do any of us have an ability to unlock <laughs> I think we've been. Uh, <laughs> <goodness. laughs> Deja vu. I'm <laughs> 20 minutes ago in the game. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. If I remember, so, somebody's got a crowbar. Does somebody have a crowbar? Yeah, that, that's a silent way of doing it. <laughs> Yeah. The best way to get into places, you know, window breaking, door oh, crying, you? So you, you didn't pick the lock. Chest opening. Actually, yeah, oh. I do have a question. Maybe, maybe, maybe would Cyrus maybe be able to know us? Would he be able to use like push on the mechan like the like lock mechanisms? Use it, or shove the, the no, you, um, you don't. Yeah. Uh, you can't do it with um, locks or things like no, that. You'd yeah. have to see inside uh, it, wouldn't you? Yeah. Well, I know you're. I know you're small, but you're not that small. <laughs> <laughs> um, just to remind you that um, as long as people are in touch range for you. And you want to put your spells on, say, three people, and you don't want to put any yeah. um, magnitude onto them, then um, to cast one spell would take you um, two turns. So if you wanted to put damage resist on people, however, if they were not in touch, range i had to do it a range then it then it would be three turns before the spell um would come off um uh, and that just would be obviously if you want to reduce it down to um say two targets then that would uh, adjust it uh where it still be three turns remember it's an extra turn for everything that you want to change yeah maybe I mean, this is, this is quite a cowardly way of doing things, but maybe we wake this beast up and we get him to to come to the the, 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 the bars on the gate and then maybe we could stab him through the gate with my spear <laughs> or sword and let him die that way. And I, he's got his phone to it now to stop. <laughs> I apologise, my phone's going off. No, right. sorry. I, I was just saying to, to our friends that maybe we wake up the beast and let him come to the, the cage doors, to these, these doors, and we stab him through it with it being locked. Clearly, it, really he's tried to escape before and what hasn't been able through? to. Well, um, you know, he, you it's, if he comes through, it's a cowardly way of doing it, I suppose, but at least we, we'd be safe. No, I don't know. Mm. <laughs> no, I, I totally disregard what I've said. No, 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 no. It's we're all we're all trying to figure out a strategy. Uh, I, 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 I thought that um, Rohan was had the ability to to open locks silently. If I'd known it was using a crowbar, I would. <laughs> you know. If we had known, oh, Bal to be on. <laughs> to the crowbar. You you I gave your that. extra weight to his crowbar. <laughs> yeah. Is it a is it a cage? <laughs> Say again, so is it a cage or uh it's gone. He's uh, even I'm gone. Glad. I keep thinking it's my cage. internet's terrible. No. Uh, it's just, it's there. Um, Say big boy words. <laughs> <laughs> Use it. Sure. Write it down. Is this what you guys <laughs> say to me when I'm having internet problems? No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, ah, damn it. It's back. We we can hear you now. So All the right. the funniest thing was when Medivac said, "Use big boys' words." <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
right. Sorry. Is it, is it a K? <laughs> is it like is it like a a a jail door or is it like a regular? Okay. Door? Um. So it's it's like iron bars. So it's got iron okay. bars, to, but they're sort of like across uh, a bar halfway up horizontal. Um, it definitely, it doesn't look like, from what Hasra could see inside, it doesn't look like it was a jail. It looked like it had stuff in it. and But it the outside gates, if we call them giant gates, were definitely locked and pounded from inside. Am I, um, I have a question, because I'm putting one little strategy here. Am I, am I able to cancel my own um spells so like say if there's a, a certain time frame am i able to like okay yeah so spells i've uh, well your spells have uh, a duration and but if they go outside that duration just just like any spells they stop at the end of the scene um so for example if you're going to go into battle with whatever's in or whatever you do next the scene will start then and finish when it comes to a close. But you can actually turn your spells off anytime you want. But to turn them back on again, you you would have to cast again. The only one that is an exception to that is your rack that you can pull off people and send on to other people as long as it's in within the duration. So I have an idea. Um, my damage resistance ability um, not only works on people, but can also work on items or, or things, including doors. So I can do damage resistance on the door, so that way we know he won't break through or have a, a much more difficult time breaking through, which would then allow us to stab at him and whatnot. He's just trying to get us. Use that essentially as a barrier to protect us. Well, my, my, my concern after after suggesting this was this beast is, is, is if it is a beast in there, it's locked in there. You know, yeah. un, under clearly under um under duress, he, he's been been or it's been kept in there for one purpose. So maybe if we free it. Uh, maybe or we free it. It still kills us. It rips people apart. Why would we free it? Who let the dogs out? <laughs> I think if we use the damage resistance on the door, then we could test that theory. We could see if this is something that is being punished by Chehalia rather than one of her minions. Hmm. Yeah, and like, if, like it's gonna be a touch thing. So, if it's evil, then you can stick your spears through the the bars. Well, the wise voice of Amriel comes from Bartleby, uh, as always. Use that as my fourth person. Like Sarah's voice, which does not. The, yeah. ah, sorcery. Paul Simon. <laughs> is, is, is it a tongues. film? Is it a book? I wonder if it would be better if he turns his camera off. Better for who? Um, yeah, you could put muscle pickles over him. No, don't do that. I'll confuse the audience, especially if you go. I think if he turns his camera off, it should just still come up as Cyrus or his name on the. Uh... I have no idea why my internet's like this. Do you, Cyrus? Do you just want to turn your camera off so the only bandwidth it's taking is is for your voice? I, and then, I mean, I, you're I, back I now. You're back if now. You, if, have this. Give me. Uh, continue on. You guys figure it out. Give me like five minutes. I'm just going to restart my router. I think that's honestly the issue. Okay, then. No um, worries. And I think I think things will be a lot easier because this this is usually usually it's all Mr. Pickles. So uh, <laughs> yeah, no worries at all. So if you do will, that, uh, all right. You, and you guys what, continue. Yeah. So what's going to happen? Um, 
I assume he's going to drop out of the um, meeting. And then um, all of a sudden, we will not have um, anybody's picture um, showing. So now I'm trying to pick up the Zoom call and put us all on like that. And then when it comes back, you'll have to do it all again. Uh, yeah. Well, I've I've now just got just the Zoom call. Um, so there's all four of us um, there. And then what I'll do is just um, kill the ones to the um, spaces like that. So we're, we're now just big in the center of the, the screen, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so so the, the plan seems to be, if I'm correct, that to put damage resist on the door. Or the lock. A lock. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then... Um, what encourage it to the front? Maybe um, summon it forward. See what happens. Okay. Wait a wake it up. We've missed like the the probably the best idea possible. Can Cyrus squeeze through the bars? <laughs> Sorry, he's, um, he's small. Is he small enough to do so? But the the thing that he can turn into a bird and go through. The bar. Yes. He can actually got that Cyrus in deep thought. <laughs> <laughs> so if uh, beforehand Cyrus was commenting about how do we know what's in there? Um, well, he could turn into a little owl that I think he's done before. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And flying owls are incredibly silent flyers. Plus. Plus, they can obviously see in the dark, and he could actually go and check it out and see what you're actually up against. Um, he wouldn't be able to see five. I mean, he he wouldn't be able to say um, necessarily read things. Um, but I mean, if he's well. yeah, <laughs> no, he can't read in any case. No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I was going to say he does keep his mental attributes, but that that wouldn't matter uh, no matter what. So, but he could actually um, <laughs> suss out what's actually in there, um, just to let you uh, all know. Um, and Hazra, you probably relate this to um, everybody else. That lock doesn't look like it's given way any time at all. Yeah. So it's like the, the, the gates are buckled, aren't they? The correct. Buckled, yeah. Attack. So you wouldn't need to put a um, a spell on it to stop it from getting damaged. It doesn't. I mean, it might be able to burst out, but from what you can see on the gate, if it's it tried. it has tried and failed, um, the only other thing that I'll just point out to your uh, to throw into the plan and Hazra you can talk about this in any case because you're quite um, proficient at hunting and Cyrus is of course uh, a war um, strategist person so your plan about attacking it through the bars assumes that it stays at the gate indeed however at the present moment in time that the room beyond is large enough that you can't cast light to the back or, or see him or mm. it at the back. So your plan would work if it runs to the front. For one attack. Yeah, yeah. and just sort of like stays there. Mm. But if it's sort of like getting beaten to a pulp, mm, it, might just, the corner. Yeah. it might just retreat rather than... Um, continuing but um as cyrus was saying when he was saying about um a bit of recon he actually holds the the answer himself Power. yeah he, he does and so it's he actually has that the the other thing is i'm not too sure how many magic points he's got that left be my worry you know so it's, I, I'd rather have his protection 
than scouting, to be honest, because his protection is pretty damn good. It is. Oh, hang on, he's back. Right, here he goes. Right, let me just um, turn that top one off and turn these back on. Can we hear you? I think so. I yeah. yeah. Mark calling Austin. Come in, Austin. Yep. He's come back with a new hairstyle. Yeah. It's very fetching. It's very 1980s. So. We thought of nothing while you were gone. <laughs> <laughs> we all just quietly sat here. Waiting. And talked about our favorite <laughs> memories of Cyrus before we pushed him through the bars and fed him to the beast. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, okay, so maybe. Hang on, yeah, hang on. Right. Let let them tell you what we discussed about. Uh, yes. okay. Yeah. Um, Cyrus, I, I've looked at the lock, and it is it is very robust. This this thing, it looks like it's attacked these 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 gates before, and this lock has not budged. It has not moved. It has not cracked. It has not given way. So you do not need to cast. Um, All right. uh, any any sort of strengthening thing on, on, on the lock, it seems fine. But um, we, we, what what we were discussing is, do, do you remember? And this is purely down to if you want to do this or not. But do you remember when you turned into that beautiful owl, that majestic yeah. beast of the night that flew around? And you could see in the dark and see what was... Do you fancy doing that and pop it through those? <laughs> <laughs> Silent. Do, do you think, I mean, I, I do not know how strong your magic is at the moment, how, how, how much of yourself you have to give. But, you know, if you perhaps turned into this thing and had to look around silently inside, you would, then we would know what we are up against, perhaps. I can do that. Why I can do this. Foreign voice. I can be a century in this situation, look and see what our situation is. Hopefully I don't get eaten by a giant monster, but um I think they, they it's okay. We, we have somebody can we see how nope. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the other thing is your owl would be see... extremely quiet. Mm. Yeah. As it flies. Oh yeah. Granola bar. Mm. Oh. All right. Um, we'll do that. So we have to know what we're dealing with, know what the size of the creature is, and all that. But there you go. I still think stabby stabby through the gateway is the best way to protect us. Right. We, we were discussing this all <laughs> yeah. this this room in behind is, is quite big and so mm -hmm. we would get perhaps one hit on this beast if it came to the to the cage and then it would run away yeah beyond our reach so we'd have to go in anyway so maybe mm. if can, can you can you turn into anything else other than birds or just birds <laughs> just birds. <laughs> Maybe if you small in, turn into a very small bird and climb in through its mouth and then grow back into a size. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please try that. Please try that. <laughs> that seems dangerous, guys. I don't want to do that. Now if I go no. through the other hole, maybe, and then... <laughs> That was a little, a little less dangerous. <laughs> <That's a penis>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I, uh, yeah, okay, I'll turn into owl. Okay, then. Some uh, reconnaissance, and uh, from there we'll, uh, okay, if I die or not. so the, the standard duration is 14 minutes, so you'll have plenty of time with that. You can touch yourself. Nobody may a comment, please. You don't need to do any extra targets. The only question is, do you wish to um, increase the magnitude of the spell, i.e. 
the amount of power it will take to dismiss it. Well, I have nothing else to spend the points on, and I have to do two um, points anyways, right? Well, you currently, if you have, if you don't change anything, you have magnitude of one at the moment. Um, if you mm -hmm. don't change anything, it just costs you one power and um, one turn to cast it. If you change the magnitude, you can um, use all, um, I think you have eight points. Yeah. Um, so you can use all um, eight of them that would take it up to magnitude nine and that will cost you two power points to cast and two turns. Well, the two turns is, uh, is not a worry, yeah. you know, but it does mean that you'll have not as strong as Bartleby's theist spells, obviously, which I think are magnitude 11. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but... But... It would be good to have it high just in case there's anything to do with neutralizing magic in the room. Um, because if it is powerful in there and it almost like an anti-magic shell, you could actually fly in mm -hmm. and suddenly find yourself back as Cyrus. So do you want no, to... You're right. I'll do it. I'll do the two. Okay, then. Um, so... Magic. It doesn't really Super magnitude. Yeah, um, so it doesn't really matter about the time. That's absolutely fine. Um, it just cost you two power points. The only thing to remember is remember to have I, we, one thing that we were talking about, Cyrus, before you, before you came back was we don't know how many magic points you have got left. Um, so, you know, if you've got plenty that you can spend two points on, then that's fine. If you think I should only spend one point here, then that's fine. It's just that you won't have a high magnitude for it. It'd be up to you. No, I have, a, I have enough just for the two at this time. Um, I have, I'll have enough for a battle. Okay, so, cool. So just yeah, without, without being completely depleted. yeah. So just um, roll your invocation. Um, I mean, you might get a critical and just um, thing, but as long long as it's uh, a good roll and not a fumble, we'll be fine. Yeah. So you can spend um, uh, minutes on it to cast it, and that will actually give you. Um, what you can see and you can turn into a cute little owl. Um, so before you go in, can you just tell me what you are planning um, on doing and then I can relate it to you. Well, the you biggest say. thing is I want to avoid the floor as much as possible just in case the yeah. thing wakes up and is able within, you know, reach uh, level of mine. Um, I'm pretty much going to scout so I see him or see what it is kind of figure out roughly how large of an error do we have you know what to expect if we were to break him yeah and to see if uh even anything else is noticeable hey if he has like a like a you know a necklace with a key on it maybe i can just take the key yeah. i don't know okay um so you go um flying around and the rest of the party you see him um, go off into the darkness and quite strangely uh, as he is becomes a small owl and after about three or four minutes um, the bird reappears after he has um, scouted out the room and Cyrus um, rematerializes and gives you a, a bit of a description of what he saw and i'll just relate that um back to the party etc so when i expose the map um the room is it looks smaller than what it actually is but i will put the beast on at the correct size just so you know so the first thing cyrus tells you is that the room seems to be full of almost like gifts there's um, what appears to be piles of coins lying around the place. There seems to be what um, you initially thought might be um, drapes is actually um, tapestries. There seems to be rugs. There seems to be jars and um, coffers. And there seems to be a lot of items in the room. 
as if it's been almost like given as um, gifts to keep the um, beast, well, pacified, maybe, or content. You also notice, Cyrus, as you flew around, that it appears that food has been given to the beast and the food, the remains of the food is around the whole room. There seems to be um, the bones of small animals and there seems to be like pewter plates all scattered around. But the important thing that you saw was something quite huge it was seen to be sleeping underneath some tapestries or drapes as if it had used it for some kind of bed it was under the drapes so you could see the bulk of its body its head was out resting quite unusually on a series of cushions There were definitely cushions and you could see the big beast underneath the tapestries. It also had with it on the outside of the tapestries what appeared to be a huge, and I repeat, huge hammer. Cyrus, can you just roll your, I think you've got a strategic warfare or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll roll my my huge hammer skill. Um, yeah. Right there. Uh, yeah, um, it's all right. Um, that's yeah. that's fine. You get the information. You do think that this creature is probably about size twenty two, so it, it is huge. The other thing that you are very much aware of and you tell the party this is that with the beast wielding the hammer, you will not be able to attack the beast. Any attacks at keeping at the edge of the hammer would actually, you would be hitting the hammer. You're going to have to move in such a way to close range or close the range in order to be within the away from the end and closer to the monster you know this is um just for all of you so you're aware that is a a special so basically the rules at the moment because the hammer and the beast is so huge is that if you fight hand-to-hand combat with it then you will be hitting the hammer, but the hammer will be hitting you. Hence why your weapons have hit points and things like that. What you would have to do then in order to actually hit the beast, this is only melee combat. Spells would be fine. Rohan, your thrown weapons would be fine. But say, for example, you, Hazra, you would have to get a combat special and move within close range to it at that point at that point the beast cannot bring the full weight of the hammer to bear on you he would just be using the shaft so it'll be a lot less damage but you will be close enough to hit the beast physically Mm -hmm. the other thing to say is that at that point the beast can Fire a special, disengage, and hence increase the range once more. So once you're there, unless you're physically holding on to the beast, then you know it's you don't. He would have to have a special to to move back out again. Otherwise, it's just going to hit you with the um, the butt of the of the hammer. Um, apart from that. The room's very big. You definitely think that if you lured it to the front of the cage, if it didn't want to stay there, it could definitely go to the back and be quite safe. It could take refuge underneath drapes or cushions or whatever. 
And one of the things that you definitely come out thinking, Cyrus, is that the setting, the furniture, the what's in that room does not seem to match the beast. And mm. talking to Hazra about it, Hazra, Brutus never has a cushion and pulls tapestries over it to sleep. <laughs> magical creature. So the suggestion is that it's, yeah, magical creature, but it's also uh, a creature with like a conscience creature with, mm. it's probably uh, you know, a little more intelligent, probably even, you know, maybe even used to be a human. Do you, do you remember that beast we fought outside the village? Yeah. And it was, we, 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 we discovered it was made from the children. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, the um, Death Stalker. That's right, yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe, maybe perhaps this is something similar and it has a knowledge of past items and artifacts that maybe it had. I do not know, but it's just a hunch, perhaps, or just a, a random guess. Maybe Bartleby would be well, a wiser person to ask about this. I, or possibly. I just uh, think of all of the platters that you described in there and the, all of the different gifts. And I can't help but feel that that's what perhaps was taken from our town of Windvine. Or just in general, you don't give gifts maybe. To a captive. You could, if you are trying to bribe the captive to let you through to the next, to you know, for, like access through the the door down south. But he's locked in this cage. There was no other exit in the and room. You want uh, that that is correct, Hazard. Um, Cyrus can verify that there's no mm -hmm. other exit. And just to give you an idea of size, the token is the right size for that corridor, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, so this thing has been kept in there, and somebody's been putting possessions in there to keep the thing comfortable, rather than bribing it. This is going to be a silly question to ask, but that, does that mean it won't be able to fit through here? It would be a very tight fit. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, it probably could go down sideways. Yeah, because we were told this thing hunted through the maze, weren't we? Yeah. Wait, but it's locked in. So what, what the thing the old band said was, were we the sacrifices? Didn't you know words to that effect? So they must send people down here randomly and then lock the gates and let this thing out, perhaps? Possibly. You know, this thing could also have been here for centuries because time here is different. Mm, definitely different. Yeah, definitely different. So this, you know, we're thinking of like all this gold and everything. You know, we see, we've seen entire kingdoms rise and fall from when you know just from the tapestries you see on the walls and whatnot and the dead bodies and whatnot so this gold this treasure could be centuries old and we're just kind of you know, there's, there's nothing suggests that this is recent um we have two ways to approach this we can approach it aggressively and then try to uh, attack them for all from all sides so that way you know some of us people attack them from behind um, or we can try diplomatically and try, maybe we can see if we can communicate with the creature and make a deal. But the other one, the latter sounds like possible way of getting our ass kicked. So, or both ways really, but mm. at this point, I'm just, we got to make a decision. I can do everything I can and giving us uh, damage resistance and giving us so we can penetrate its, you know, thick hide. But at the same time, this can is you please just say bypass armor because it just sounds really weird. <laughs> Where okay. I I can give you strength yeah. to penetrate its thick yeah. hide. <laughs> 
Yeah, sorry. Bypass RB. Yeah. Um, <laughs> bypass RB. <yeah. laughs> so. <laughs> 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 okay. So, what's the option, guys? Are we going headstrong? I have one idea to break through the uh, the lock. I don't know if it's a smart idea, but it's an idea. But it will be very loud, and who's definitely going to wake him up? Mm. Are you suggesting crowbar? No, I'm just suggesting something even more exciting. I, I, I do not believe a crowbar would open that lock if he could not. <laughs> The side of the I, know, I was just. I'm I, going to look in these lockers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Do you know? Everybody was so quiet. I actually looked across at OB, OBS to see whether or not everybody was still with me. Yeah. We'll, we'll I, next week. I, everybody was like not moving. I was just like <laughs> staring at the screen, like what. <laughs> uh, Bartleby, my friend, what do you suggest? You should we try the peaceful method or? It has a hammer, a very big hammer. And all of the spoils from this village. I think this is either a minion of our enemies uh, or the worst cap. It could be here for. Mm. I think we need to, to go in yeah. and, and be heroic slayers of evil. Okay. No, that is. That is... Good. And I believe Captain Kangaroo should go first as he's not here. Has <laughs> he gone? Sorry. Can you guys hear me at least? Yes, we yeah. can. We can hear you. So, uh, that, so that's sorry. absolutely. Um, what was your way of getting the door open? Well, I wasn't able to use it on the crab um, because we killed the crab a little easier than I thought. So I don't uh, I think to... I don't think you've got your explosive with the net. The yeah. Oh, did I leave that? Yes. Yeah, all the seaweed are there. Yeah. Um, well, that's a bummer. All right. Uh, um, is, is there is there a mat in front of the gate at all times? There, there, it's there's not a mat in front of the gate, but there is a pot plant yeah, just, just next to it that you can, <laughs> <laughs> you can, use it. You can just have a little. <laughs> yeah. oh. And then you lose your arm. No, um, okay, well, that was my idea. I was gonna big bane. I have an idea. Ah, we're here. Oh. All right, do it. Okay, so here's my idea. <laughs> Uh, again, yell at me if anything starts to sound robotic. Oh! Um, okay. Okay. Well, now I'm Speak hearing English. The screaming. Speak English. <laughs> I don't know if it's real screaming. You're fine. Uh, you're good. May I'm over you're good. No, you're okay. fine. You're fine. I spoke Spanish, and I, that got me back. Okay. So here's my plan. I, I think that we should cast our protective spells. Mm-hmm. Um, and and get everybody capable of fighting and being protected against this beast. And then our powerful sorcerer here, Cyrus, you should try and see if maybe you can cast that little fiery thing and burn with magic this lock or this door down and then redirect your flames of, of hatred and... Oh, the rat spell, yes. Yeah. If I put the... the yes. If I put the Aegis of my, my goddess onto Hazra, he'll be able to charge in and do all the distracting without being able to be injured, hopefully. Or he <laughs> one blow. I just imagine how Hazra stood here going, what? I'm not in love. I can, yeah. I can bring this shield and it's very powerful. It's very, very powerful. Plus, you're talking about um, damage resist as well, aren't you, on Cyrus? Yeah. yeah. Well, we, we could uh, skimp there if we needed to, I guess, but you could also apply damage resistance as well because um, my Aegis is blocking all except for one hit location. Your head. Yeah. 
Yeah, my oh, age. Yes. Uh, and that's the that's the part that's closest to the Minotaur's uh, hammer. Uh, um, it's okay. probably one of its one of Hazra's legs, um, which is easily fixed. Yeah, and honestly, you only or need the one left item. arm, so you can draw your scimitar. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, we have that then. Um, all the most. I'll do my best <laughs> with my with my rack spell. Uh, that's all I can say. So. Yeah, let's do it. Um, just pretty, pretty much going to okay, almost use it. Before we run in and do this with no backup plan in case your rack spell doesn't even go through this because your sorcery is weak. Uh, no, that's not. It's, it's what's fire, our backup plan? Metal. Um, hit you with the crowbar. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe we can create like a nice folk band to kind of tour the countryside until. <laughs> Kumbaya, um, I've got the musician skill, so. Well, at least you, at least you the, put the, your skills to use. Yeah, you know, the problem um, is we need to get out of here to be able to do that. No, oh, yeah, we true. need to yeah. kill this thing to get out of here. Or so we have no other choice. We kill you know, this we, thing. Uh, yeah. It'd be nice if we if 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 all of a sudden uh, Bartleby's like, "Hey, can you stop, buddy?" And he's the bridge was okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I just I don't know where you were. And then he's like, "Hey, uh, why don't you just give us the key and you come with us and we'll be good good pals." I was like, oh, okay. And then that would be that would be how that I would mean, yeah. You could join if his party. issue was if his issue was that he was feeling very upset about something, yes, I could call upon yeah. my goddess to make him realize that all of our issues are temporary and he'd calm down. Mm -hmm. I can also call upon my my goddess to pacify everybody in the general area around me. I can stop riots, but that would include you lot. Got it. Yeah, of course. Yes, of course. Right. Um, Unless, well, of course, you're strong of mind, then you could probably <laughs> beat a goddess. Well, we've also kind of proven that your goddess is not really helpful down here. Uh, coincidentally. Are you guys having a magic, <laughs> a, a magic fight in this position? <laughs> yeah, and and you know he does have the high ground. He can just cauterize his wounds when he gets his leg. <laughs> <laughs> They're having a magic size comparison. Yeah. yeah. Um, Hasra, do you have a damage modifier? Um, no. <laughs> no, 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 because the, the only thing that I would um, allow to happen in a sort of like a, simult a simultaneous manner is that you could actually, Hazra, you could actually try to charge into combat. Um, what that would mean um, is that Cyrus would hopefully break the door and you would go in, and then at the end of the combat round, you do your damage. It would be one difficulty harder, um, but your damage modifier is up by one level. So if it's zero, it would be up plus 1d2. Um, um, but um, the other thing that nobody's um, commented about yet is the lack of light in the room. That's what um, you got me in the rack spell for. Two sources yeah. of light, sort of, except yeah. one's a little bit. So one, um, can I? Can it be cast at range, the light spell? Oh, no, no, I meant my lantern light. Uh, I yeah. I've on my lantern. How would you throw the lantern through the... <laughs> well, you could. Somebody could um, throw it in there. Either You could either do it... With a bag of oil. Another point. Well, you, you could... I mean, how I'm, um, it could be that everybody's buffed up. And then what happens, Hazo, if you want to charge into combat, you're sort of like um, waiting down here. And there's a count of three, two, one. Ha Cyrus blasts the door open. And then, say, Rohan, or who is stood here, tosses the lantern into the room. Um, it's going to be protected. It's not as if it's throwing in a, a torch, you know, but that would give you light. But as that happens, you're already running, um, mm. Hazra. 
um, in to try to get to it. Well, if you charge into combat, you would get to it at the end of that round, and then you would do your damage, and then we would roll initiative. You know, if right. that makes sense. The other really good thing about that plan, just out of interest, is that you will be at close range. Mm -hmm. And you see when... It, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So even if it grabs its hammer, I mean, you could kill it in one shot. You know, but the, the other thing is it might it'll still be prone unless something dreadfully goes wrong. You know, so at least it's going to have to get up. Yes. And pick up its weapon to hit you. That does sound like actually a really good plan. In fact, you should leave it to Yeah. <laughs> the beast is covered in flammable tapestries and such. It could just be burned alive. Yeah. If you had um See, the downside sorry, got the downside here is in short range, longer weapons cannot parry. Oh no, my my, my weapon's medium, isn't it? So I can't parry. Yeah. I also have an, uh, one other thing I can cast to help out with Medivac's uh, dilemma is I can cast Fireblade on his spear. Nice. So with respect to fire or anything like that, it's not just I'll throw the oil in it, a cast fire. There's a percentage chance that certain things will cast a light and it's done on what it actually is. Um, so obviously, if you toss something into a bonfire, it will set a light. Um, but, you know, you could uh, a lantern is quite protected. Your fire blade would require some touching um you know but you don't know what state those tapestries in if the beast been in there for several um years maybe it, they could be rather damp or it could just be crispy kindling ready to um you know mm. set a light and burn the whole place down I don't, if it did go on fire and everything went according to plan, I don't think the beast would just stand in there, you know, oh dear, I'm on fire. Um, he's likely to run. And there is only one way out of that um, place that we know. Yep. That's, that's, okay. That's good. Let's okay. Go with, um, Does that plan, sound? Plan from above. Okay, then. So I'll put, let's do some spell casting first, shall we? Um, so Cyrus, um, are you, what are you casting on whom? And Bartleby, what are you casting on whom? Okay, um, I'm casting, I'm assuming Rohan, I'm assuming he's also going into the fight after Medivac as well. Right? Yeah, I mean, Rohan has the advantage that he can chuck his knives at distance. He'll have three ready to throw before he needs to reload. So, and um, Hasra, just to let you know, the beast is so big, it wouldn't be, there wouldn't be a chance of missing, hitting you, you know? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So how many targets do you want um, bypass armor on? Uh, not bypass, the... da damage resist, sorry. Damage resist. Uh, uh... If it's the same, I might as well do a four. Okay. So four targets. So that's four of your shaping points used up. Mm -hmm. So you've got another four left. So you can leave and That it. would be duration. Well, your du duration is 14 minutes as standard. Okay. So, so that's not a problem. It's whether or not you want to up the magnitude again. Mm-hmm. You could up the magnitude um, to five, um, which is the highest it can be, but that will take three power points. If you leave it just magnitude one, then it'll take two power points. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have to do the two power points. Okay. So we'll leave as one. So the if you roll your um, invocation uh, spell. Go ahead and do that. Come on, baby. Give me some good stuff. Yeah, so that's fine. So everybody has um, damage resist. So I think that's seven points, is it? So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So something. 
it can withstand um, seven points, which is cool. Uh, are, are you casting anything else um, cast on Cyrus? On, on my uh, thing and also Hazra's spear, uh, I'm going to cast uh, Bypass Armor. Okay, then. Um, so that would take another two um, power points and let, or magic points, sorry, unless you're increasing the magnitude. Magnitude. I'll just do the two. Um, okay, then. So just roll your invocation again. Ooh, yeah, that's, that's, that's absolutely okay. fine. So that's four um, points gone. Anything um, else? I'm going to do the... Uh, the last thing I'm going to do to set us up is the one point towards Fireblade on Hazra's spear. Okay, then. So if you're just doing it on one um, weapon, then that's absolutely fine. Unless you want to increase the magnitude, it'll just cost you one power point. Mm. I believe Fireblade's a, uh, a folk magic. Oh, yes, it's folk magic. Yeah. So, yeah, so it just cost you one. Um, so roll your folk magic for that one. Because if you get a crit, it won't um, need anything. No. Nope. Um, so, yeah, so that's what? Two, f that's five magic points um, down. Hopefully. That's, I'm getting close. Um... Okay. Um, and then the Aegis is going on. Uh, yes, the Aegis is going on Hazra, who needs to be up there. Um, okay. Not dying. Um, here's my exhort rule for that. Yeah. Got some money. One less devotional pool point. Um, and I'm going nice. to set yeah. it so that, um, I want him to stay up and fighting. So the only area it's not protecting is his left arm. Okay. Yeah. So left arm. Um, I would like to cast another spell. Well, I'd like to cast two more spells actually. Okay. That's fine. Can I just reek? Hazra's got... Damage resist, bypass armor, and fire blade. Because he's just coming back now. So I was just, yeah. yeah, that's it. I just wrote it in the chat for him. And, and I guess it's Agus as well. Yeah. yeah. Sorry about yeah. that. Yeah. So you are thrilled with magic right now. No, um, you're not quite full enough. I disagree. So uh, before anything else gets cast, um, Hazra, you have seven points of damage resist. Yeah. You have bypass armor on your spear, was it? Yep. And you have fire blade on your spear as well. And uh, you now have Aegis on you with everything being passively blocked apart from his remind me, Baltaby. Left arm. Left arm. Left yep. arm. But Baltaby has not finished casting his spells oh my yet. Did he got father? At large. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so funny. <laughs> close but i want you to be very strong oh he's going to cast a big yeah might so yeah might. it's not Ooh. a bad idea that might be what i'm very mighty okay uh, so you you got a little bit extra brawn in case you need to you know go all out sharp as well what's that blade, blade, blade sharp. sharp as well i was actually going to put blade sharp on your scimitar because i don't think they stack abilities do they you can't stack um yeah. uh, like fire blade and blade sharp. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Um and so I want to put um, well, they're, they're two different separate things. They're both yeah, folk magic. magic doesn't like your magic. Oh, uh, okay, so. okay, okay. Okay. Um yeah, uh, I want to put blade sharp on your scimitar and for good measure I'll put one on uh, uh on Rohan's dagger, I guess. Throw away dagger. Yeah, so for um, Rohan, I'm quite happy for you to cast it on the three that he has out. Oh, okay, yeah. Do you see what I mean? That's what I can do. Then yeah. I'd be happy to do that, unless I was feeling vindictive. But okay, here's the scimitar roll. Nice. Here is the dagger roll. And yeah, I'm dagger. Both fine. So each one of your um, weapons, uh, your scimitar and your blades, um, Rohan are now altered so they'll go one stack up so if they're normally 1d4 they're now 1d6 okay. so Aegis, refresh my memory that's the parry one isn't it, that parry blows automatically yeah it's like a sh it's acting like a shield yeah I would like to cast one last spell but it's on me because I'm selfish Yeah. Um, I just want to be able to see if there's any magic going on and I want to be able to see 
<laughs> has her glowing like a, a beacon. <laughs> okay, nice. Yeah, um, go for it. Yeah, okay then. Um, brilliant. Magic. So who's tossing the lantern in? Uh, I thought we don't have to because I, I did Fireblade. Well, we'll, still well, we'll do it anyway. R Rohan might as well do that as well. Yeah. All right, yeah. It also means that he, with a couple of steps, Rohan will be into... I mean, Rohan, if you move and then fling your blades, then it means that you'll be close enough to engage a little bit closer range than at the long range that it's at. And, and I'm hoping that I'm going to be in close range to distract him from even touching you. Yeah. And um, Bartleby, where do you wish to be? I'm going to be trailing behind and throwing a few shock spells. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I just got this be, me being a fly on a windshield. I, I feel that you need to see Hazra. Mm, maintain the Aegis. It doesn't require uh, yes. concentration, but I, I think it would make sense for it. Okay then. So I'd like I'd like to cast one spell. Oh yes, I forget. I keep oh. forgetting you've got spells. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to cast a uh, speed art. Okay. Yeah. Just to get that longer range. Oh, that was pretty poor. Um. I'll, oh, yeah, yeah. I'll use a luck point. I'll use a luck point to roll it oh, again. Yeah, that was horrible. That was a bad roll, and Jesus. that's it. <laughs> you know, I'm not. <laughs> You got one higher. <laughs> Obvious, obviously, I'm meant to critical fail today. The, 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 the uh, advantage is that nobody saw it, so don't worry. Uh, yeah. Nobody saw it at all. Okay, then. Thank you for taking all the bad rolls. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, then. Um, so, everybody seems to be ready. So, what we're going to do is that we're going to do the first part of the combat to make sure everything works. And then after that, we'll roll initiative, okay, with people in their uh, places ready to go. Okay, then. So I think you need to cast um, a rack spell, Cyrus. Is that right? So, yeah. Oh, baby. Oh, come um, on. So the, the... This is what Will says. It's immune to magic. Well, the you're going to have to put one point of shaping into the range because you're not mm -hmm. at touch okay so and and that means that it'd be yeah. 14 meters away which is plenty um it depends whether or not you want to uh, let's put it this way i was going to ask about the magnitude but um then i suddenly realized baltaby you can tell cyrus that there's actually no magic on the gate itself okay um and I will do that after a yeah. moment of deliberation. Yeah, so you don't need to you uh, increase the um, the, pa the uh, magnitude, but that will cost you two, um, two magic points. Yeah, and I'm also probably having to consider, well, no, it's, it's just it's for, uh, 14 minutes for duration, right? Yeah, the duration yeah. is not right, but I'm just, mm, I'm just totting up, much. I'm just totting up how many magic points you've used because I know how much you had it's, left. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's not great. Um, pretty much almost there. Uh, but I'll have to do it because you know this is, this is for us, right? Yeah. Okay then. So, um, Hazra, you're almost like crouch, semi panther like, with your glowing. <laughs> My you're, spear in my hand. Uh, yeah, you're. I, I, I'm panting. Yeah. I'm my jaguar tooth. Uh, exactly. And um, the the tip of your spear is a light. Um, Rohan has the lantern ready, and Bartaby seems to be commanding a, a fair amount of power. Some of it on you in almost like that magical aura mm. of Amriel. I, I can feel Amriel coursing around my body. Um, and every, everything is quite quiet. And then Cyrus begins to cast his spell. Off you go. Yeah. Um, okay. So as you see the rack spell come out of um, Cyrus, those fiery tendrils stretching out 
um, to the um, door, you set off um, running. Yeah. Okay, Cyrus, let's see how powerful your magic is. Let's do some damage. We don't want one. We really do not want one at this point. Can I reroll damage as a luck point? Um, no, I don't think you can actually, but I'll check while while you're while you're casting it. Oh, no need. <laughs> no, no need. Yeah. So you um actually fire the rack um spell, and you notice that it hits the the lock, and you probably um notice Rohan, you're closest to it, that it's probably burnt the magical power of the rack spell has melted the lock. Um, obviously, a normal torch or whatever would not have done so. And and you charge through the door and... Oh, first. Uh, yeah, and l start to run towards um, the beast, who seems at this point still um, asleep. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, uh as, as I go past Rohan, I want, I want, I want and, and the gates have just opened. I want to whisper in that harsh way, no, ruined. Yeah, so Rohan um, tosses the, the lantern in. And yeah, so remember, you're on a hard difficulty because normally it would be standard to finish this. And that's the reason that is, is because you're going over all the. Uh, yeah, yeah. So let's have a roll to see whether or not you hit. And this is my combat style. Um, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, that, that's good. They, you would have hit in any case because the beast is helpless. It doesn't know anything. But I just really wanted to see whether or not you... No, you crit or... Yeah, or fumbled. Oh, yeah, um, I was being... But now that you mentioned it, yeah, you could have fallen over. Um, so you get to the end. You will have a special. Mm. And then I need... Depending what you want to do, I need hit location. I need special hit location and damage. Well, I don't need to do close range because I'm now in close range. You are in, yeah. You you've bypassed that, so you can do any. You can use um, impale or whatever you wish. I, I'm going to press advantage. Okay. Well, oh, oh. He's you, on the floor, isn't he? You don't think press advantage because he's no, not. Okay. He's, he's down, isn't he? Yeah. It might be the best thing if you want this beast I, I to will, keep. I will do impale. <laughs> yeah. The maximum damage. Uh, right yeah. Away. Okay yeah. then. So, um, so do a, a hit location for me. Right. Okay. Uh, blah, blah, blah. A seven. Um, a seven. That's Ooh, in. Optimum, hopefully. Um, yes, um, that is in. So you need impale. So roll twice. Yeah. And we'll take them. And remember, you've got um, 1d2 on it because Plus you've. 1d2. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. So just, um, do, just do your normal two rolls and then we'll and then, take the top one. Okay. So eight, eight. or. Or two. Okay. So we take the eight and then roll. That's smart. That's smart. Yeah, roll what? Yeah, take a roll a one d two again. Oh, ten. Yeah, um, so that's ten points of damage straight into its. Um, that's a lot of damage. Yeah, that's a lot of spirit. unmitigated damage too. Okay, then. So yeah. now, so now, um, can everybody now roll um, their initiative? Yeah, this is now on me pulling my spear back out. My, my favorite part of the game. Yeah, oh, beat my initial oh. Easy. Is there oh, thank you. Oh, uh, my bad. I press the wrong thing. My bad. I okay. Sorry. I, I can put yours on. Um, it's not a problem, Hazza. I can put yours on. Uh, um, I, uh, let me press the actual right button. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was yours? Um, 16 for Hazza. And okay, then. there we go. Okay, then so let's um, Rohan's going first, Minotaur's going before Baltaby. Yeah, so this looks like the um, 
order. Um, just so people are aware, um, we're finishing at nine o'clock tonight because Max has a, a, a meeting to attend. Um, I, I have to go to an appointment for driving. Yeah. Oh, except oh, driving. Driving. Yeah. I, I, also, I bought a new truck. I bought a truck. That's nice. I, driving license. Well, you ha I thought you had a truck already. Well, I have two now. Two. So nice. Trucks. Can never have enough trucks. Okay. Um, I need them. So, um, Rohan, um, you go first. Now, this beast is still um, on the floor. So to throw your daggers at it now, it would be a hard roll. Okay. Um, so, or you, if you don't throw them now, then it won't, you'll have to um, just dither or delay your action. So you can save your action um, just in case you need to parry or dodge anything, or you can risk it and throw it into combat just to let you know that if you fail if you fail then there is a chance that it will hit hasra we're we're gonna we're gonna attempt this besides he's fine except for his left arm okay left oh arm. my left arm and if you do hit his left arm don't do more than seven damage <laughs> he's got daggers not he's not like <laughs> Not physically possible. Okay, then. Well, I gave Easy. you. So on 20. So on 20, you chuck your first. Um, oh, no, you have to move first if you want to close in oh, the range. Move. Yeah. Yeah. Move so up. you um, you move in and then chuck. So chuck away. You probably run in and as oh. you're running, you go with the, the first one, which actually does hit. And the beast is still incapacitated, so I need a a special, then a hit location and a damage. Um, you can't choose location at this range, but you could do um, impale um, if you wanted to do it, or you could do something like um, bleed, um, anything that's actually going to cause. I think the best thing to do at the moment is as much damage as you possibly can. You can't max damage, just, that's a crit. Yeah, just go for impale it. stack on the beast's um, skill checks. And it's a good question. If it goes into different, lo different locations. Right. So if it goes into the abdomen again, then, then it, it won't. But if, for example, and I often imagine it is that, if somebody threw knives and went into one hand and then into the other hand, that's going yeah. to make things a lot more difficult. Um, so, yeah, so impale, if you don't know, Rohan, that's when you roll your damage twice and you take the highest one and then add on any mo um, modifiers that you have. Yeah, but it also makes the beast attack <laughs> one difficulty level higher. Your all skills. Very, yeah. your all skills, which is yeah. very beneficial. It's good for us. Yeah, yeah, we'll go with the impale. Yeah. This time, yeah. Now your 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 knives don't have bypass armor on it, do? Oh yeah, no, they do. No, they don't. Uh, yeah. No nope. blade sharp. Blade, yeah, just, just blade, blade sharp. Knife. Okay then. So so that's that's a hit. So let's do impale. So let's do a um, hit location first. Eleven. Uh, Chest. Working yeah, so that's nicely in, in its chest. So roll your damage. So are they normally 1d4? Yeah, so it'd be 1d6. Yeah, so roll 1d6 twice. Ew. Hopefully we'll oh, take the second yeah. roll. Ew. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Can we, can we roll for my... Uh. <laughs> No, actually, sorry, I I got Amriel to make your your first dagger into jelly. Yeah, Jesus Christ! It's, it's an accident. The others are probably fine. <laughs> Just don't believe. So your max damage is um, a one. Um, you don't have any of uh, uh, modifiers on. Um, so that it's all like goes. Oh, this is this is pain. This is true pain. 
<laughs> that is a classic role. Um, so, uh, yeah, Hasra, um, you are up next on 16. Oh, uh, you oh, do... Right, okay, sorry. Yeah. You do know the beast is awake. Um, you suddenly, it looks, um, initially it looks quite shocked, but now its eyes seem to be um, burning fiery red. I am going to pull my spear out, knowing from past experience it will cause more damage. Yeah. Okay, so roll your brawn. Um, with a bonus, with a bonus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> with, with the, you, you actually yes. pull it out, and as you pull it out, you send it backwards, and it just hits Cyrus right at the end. <laughs> <laughs> and, so like, and Cyrus is, uh, well, it would have oh. hit him if he was taller. But it's just, yeah. yeah, so how much damage went in? It was, was it? 10, wasn't it? 10, so it'll be five um, coming out. Um, okay, and therefore your blade, um, you know, it does a nice bit of singeing and cauterizing as it pulls out. It still does have the knife in, which is increasing its difficulty by one, but not by two, because you now have your glowing yeah. spear out. Okay, so the it's first... A choice. Yeah, difficult. Um, so the first thing I have to do, because of the massive 15 points of damage that you've just done, um, with um, all the magic attached to it, does it get any... Oh, uh, me. Does it get any additions for the Fireblade? Oh! Pretty sure it's like a plus D2 or plus D4. Or a plus D three, or one of those three numbers. Yes, I rolled one D two, didn't I, for my no that attack. no, no that, oh, that was my charge, wasn't it? That was your charge. Mm -hmm. What does does fire blade give you anything? Cap. It's cap this gone. is your sorcery book. You should. It's it's Stop. just it's just folk magic, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, da da da, fire blade. If cast on a weapon, it inflicts an additional 1d3 damage and has a chance of setting fire to things. Um, so do um, a 1d3. Oh, did that work? Yes, yeah, that came up once. Oh, I got a max. Um, so, okay. so, that's, um, so that's addition of two more points, isn't it, on him? Mm. Um, okay, um, so um, you sort of like pull it out and there's a singe of um, fur and the beast lets out uh, an almighty cry of pain and anguish. So just to let you know, he had eight points of damage, eight points of hit points um, on his abdomen. OK, you've now taken it down. He had nine on his chest. So that's down to eight now, thanks to Rohan. But his abdomen is now at minus nine. So it's actually it is. Yeah, well, it what it is, is that it is a, a major wound mm. that it um, has on it. So it needs to roll an endurance roll against your original attack. So what was your original um, attack? It wasn't that good for 34. this. 34. Yeah. 34. Okay, then. So if it fails, if it fails its roll, and then it is dead. Okay. There, there, there's nothing you can do. You can't stabilize it or anything at all. It is just dead. So you probably punctured it in the heart and you yanked it back and you severed arteries left, right and centre and it's actually um, dead. Um, if it, it turned back into the three-year-old girl it used to be. It, if it doesn't, if it does succeed, then it's going to, if, unless it's healed, it's going to die in um, double its healing rate number of turns. So within five seconds, it's going to be dead in any case. But remember, if it was for you guys, 
that would be very important because, well, first of all, you would use a point of luck mm -hmm. um, to um, change it. But um, so, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do, guys. Oh, I'm going to use my point of luck to down yeah. to downgrade it. How dare you, sir? From a major okay. wound. How could you, you use the point of luck? However, however, <laughs> did you expect a huge monster to have no luck at all? Oh. Um, so it will take it down. Um, Serious to yeah to minus seven, um, in, out of the um, at minus eight, um, but it still has to do an endurance check. Um, but if I succeed in it, I'm still up. Mm. If I well don't, yeah. I am unconscious but not dead. You would have to do the final blow, okay? So, um, yeah, let's have a roll of my endurance. Here we go. Fingers crossed, people. May the luck of the GM be with me. It's going to be a 100. No, it's a, no. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. So close. Now, ju now, just to let you know, um, I can't use a point of luck to change it because I've already used my luck on that downgrade. Uh, to di um, downgrade it. So despite Can I give you a point of luck, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, dwarf carnage. So the um, you pull your um, spear out, and there's a things pulling out as well. Yeah, and well, yeah, its guts are coming out left, right, and center. You think you probably hit the spleen or something like that, and you pull it out, and the fire in the beast's eyes seems to disappear as its life force slowly drains um, out of it. It's blood cascading down and probably is cascading out all over the floor. And you notice, uh, Bartleby, that there seems to be a bright burst of magic um, from the back of the room. And Hazra, as you stand triumphantly over the beast, it slowly, very slowly, changes shape. I was joking. And before you lies a rather old and wizened man. <sighs> Quick, throw a sheet over it. Nobody in there. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> there, goes, there goes my idea of chopping its head off and hanging it on the wall. But I mean, an old man just to have that kind of like look on a wall, does it? So just. Oh, God. Do you know, I really do think you were going to figure it out at one point. What? Transformation. Yeah. Um, just to let you know, um, you sort of like congregate in the room. I'm conscious of time as well. Um, so as you look at round the, the loot in the room, um, there's actually um, quite a, a few gold coins in there. Um, if somebody would like to roll a, a 1d20 for me. Um, Go for it, Max. Person, sure. I already got it. Don't worry, guys. No, <laughs> not you, not you. Um, so there's. Um, oh my God, you rolled three. Um, there, there's uh, roughly, um, Darth. There's no break tonight because we're finishing at nine o'clock because Max is going on his date. Oh, sorry, his uh, getting his car driving thing. Um, so yeah, <laughs> so um, so yes, yeah, so you there's about thirty golden coins there they're not silver they're golden um oh. apart from oh and also can somebody um roll um a d10 for me it's up to you ah, you do it yeah i think the wizard should do it uh, eight um <laughs> that's a nine battle <laughs> um there is also about um eight 
precious gems. Um, um, Six. Say again, sorry. Seven. Yeah, <laughs> the, yeah. There, there's eight precious gems that you think um, actually are worth about fifty gold each. Um, I hope you're writing that down because I'm not. Um, you do suddenly realize, um, Cyrus. Um, once, once you're in the room, that. And even when all of you are looking around, there's definitely this sense of almost like humanistic tendencies. You know, the the food on the plate and the fact that plates were um, given in, this idea that the, the beast was asleep with something covering it, that... Just- just out of interest, any of these tapestries are in here. Do they have any sort of resemblance to him or any portraits or no? They the the tapestries don't see of very good quality um, at all. Um, but you do think from where you've been in in the maze. I mean, they could have been lining the walls in certain places. The, the place that you remember quite vividly not seeing anything painting on the wall was the corridor that you went down that was full of oh, traps. Well, yeah. And you, you get the feeling while you're in this room that almost it was it's as if somebody is looking after the beast. Um, rather than anything else. And one of you picked it up earlier in the sense that the the gate is actually locked from the outside. Yeah. Outside. Hmm. I think we just killed the old man's friend. Or if we he's been, well. Or if he's been locked up, maybe he wasn't a friend at all. <gasps> It's entirely possible. This is when Bartaby <laughs> pretends that he knew. <laughs> yeah. I knew this inside. Yeah, I knew. <laughs> so, so here's what happened. That old man we saw, he pulled a little trick and trapped him here. And then the Minotaur was angry. and was like, let me out so I can terrorize you more. That was such a good story to and, first. Uh, yeah. Old man, crazy and... <laughs> What well, what is it with the um, internet over in the states? I'm really worried. About. I don't know. You, you know when it's been trumped. Go. Uh, yeah. Let, let me. Sorry, nobody else hears that, but never mind. Um, <laughs> um just to let you know, um, part of me, when you look round, the the items you see here are far too rich for um, Windvine. Um, Windvine wouldn't have this state of tapestries or anything like that. One thing that you do notice, um, Hazra, after having a really good look, that apart from its armour, well, it's it wasn't wearing armour, it's sort of like tunic, etc., mm. and its great hammer, it has nothing else on itself at no. all. That's quite sad. Mm. Definitely um, doesn't seem to have anything that could identify or open even like a, a lolling cloth or anything. Or no, or could open a portal. Oh no. Oh no key. Correct. Guys, what if we were the monster all along? Impossible. We're serving the church. <laughs> well, yes, there we are. <laughs> That's, yeah. That's the best role playing you've ever done. <laughs> uh, Maybe the dead body yeah, I, is the key. Oh. But, but I can't find the key. There, there is no key on this body whatsoever. Of course, the key. My scalpel out. The, the key could be in the form of a gem. That could be anywhere in the um, in, dungeon. In, in Rohan's. <laughs> <laughs> um, We're going to have to roll that I, perception then. I, I'm going to put my hand inside the abdomen and then start rooting around. And see, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
um, you, uh, as you slowly start to think about the what's happened over the past um, few moments, because it really has been moments, it would almost like appear to you that you have been encouraged to kill this beast that turns out probably not to be a beast at all. It seems to And you were the encourager. <laughs> And it seems that this creature or this person was actually locked in here and as such, as you were aware, had tried to make several attempts to get out. You very much doubt whether or not this was something that killed sacrifices at all. Maybe we go back to the old man in the room running down that corridor and saying, the beast is coming, the beast is coming. We let it out. That, Let's see what he does. That could be a, a way forward if you wish to do that. Or we can simply well, first, go back and tell him we killed it. <laughs> in this movie. Um... I'm not assuming yeah. that you want to do anything or anything like that. It's like two day journey back, isn't it, or thereabouts? Well, you you're going to have to spend some time getting back there. Mm. Um, you can, of course, um, rest on the way, and remember, you will get um, half your magic points back, but no devotion pool. Um, I'm just looking at the time. It might be a good decision to think what you're going to do. And then I can quickly, is, is that going to be the plan to head back, get half magic points left and then yes. rush back into the, um, the room? Um, what do you think? Bart, I think be, so. Yeah. Did you see his reaction? Yeah. Okay. 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 If, 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 like it's, if it's horrible, we can go, oh, we're only joking. But if it's, if it's something else, then you know, if he opens a portal and runs away, we go through that portal. Okay, so um, remember to increase your magic points up to half of total. Okay, so it's not half back, it'll be half at total, but Bartleby, you don't get any devotion pull back. That's okay. Um, yeah, so who's leading the charge going back, just so I know who's at the front? Um, Bartleby! I actually, Mr. Oratory. I like the lead. I want to lead because I'm gonna. I got the plan, the plan. Okay then. Um. So as you and once I've done my little speech, we'll end it there because it's nearly um nine here. Um. So you head down. Oh, I I am assuming you took all the items that you could from the other room. Oh, oh yes, indeed. Yeah. Um. So you um set um child running down the corridor and the first thing that you notice is that the old man seems to be reactivating some of his um, traps the first trap right way right down um, at the doorway uh, it's not triggered yet but he does suddenly look up and see you running down towards him Rohan you're at the front what would you like to say or do oh I, I got this the beast is coming. The beast is coming. We couldn't kill it. Okay. Uh, and then I also like to roll acting. Yeah, go for it. Oh. Ooh. Yeah, Did you put skills in acting? Yeah, Hell really yeah. Good. Oh, now we know. <laughs> we now know what Moen's good for. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and as, as you say that, as you go through the the um, old man, um, you you notice the color drain um, from um, his face. He actually drops whatever he was um, that he was holding, and turns round and gets goes straight back into the room. And if you remember beforehand, he was hiding behind a, oh, the, the a chairs, yeah, the one of the, 
And as you all enter the room, um, he um, p says from be behind the throne, he, he says something like, nobody answered because we'll leave it here. Um, he says something like, kill it, kill it. You said that you were going to kill it. Uh, and that's it as you all come into the room. OK, so we will leave it there. Well done, everybody. We, we've we coped with a lot of technical issues and poor dice rolling and everything um, this, this evening, but we still managed to do it. And we'll pick up next time we play Mithras from that point. And so we know um, what's going to happen. And yes, we found out that Rowan is a really good actor it's a thespian a thespian yeah now we know where he put all his skill points don't we? I'm an actor, <laughs> awesome i wanted to take it He's like, alas we have <laughs> alas poor yorick i knew him horatio oh, I uh, my knee. <laughs> oh I this is a bit like it's about um uh, hengis hengis who could make tea or something like that oh. <laughs> yeah what um, we could do, we could do Bartleby doing the oratory skills. We could do be doing the, the direction of play while um, Rohan actually. Yeah, you could be a travelling minstrel group, like yes. in in High Dungeoness, if you remember yeah. that adventure. Indeed. <laughs> I was the big strong man who fell hopelessly in love all the time. Yeah. Uh, very, very much like my real character, just you know. Okay, people, we're going to. Um, he who's laughing? <laughs> Uh, um, yeah, so thank you for coming along. Um, we got a nice battle in there, and the party once again prove that when they're working together, they are a foe to be reckoned. But are they tough enough to beat a goddess? We'll probably see that in the next I, session I that we play. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. I, I think we're tough enough. We, we beat an old man, all right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Rohan, stop acting. Stop acting, uh, right? <laughs> no matter what. Yeah, so we'll see next time. So thank you for hanging out with us tonight. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, and they did too, even with my luck point, which I loved. Um, yeah, we we will see you all uh, next time. Until that, till then, sorry. Um, I will be back tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock playing Me Minecraft Medivac. Uh, Monday, Call of Cthulhu, Thursday, Dungeons and Dragons. At 7 o'clock? At 7 o'clock, yes. Yeah, quarter past seven. Yeah, quarter past seven on Medivac, the Healing Hoover. Okay, then. Thanks a lot for coming out tonight. We really do appreciate it. We'll see you all next time. And until then, it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from them. Say goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye, everybody.